Hey, everyone. Can you guys hear me okay? Ah. Um, my name is Rob Consalvo. Uh, uh, that's me. Uh, I'm here from H1. And uh, for those of you guys that don't know H1, uh, we're probably working with either your medical affairs team, your clinical team, sometimes commercial teams as well, uh, around KOL profiling institutions, clinical trials, all that good stuff. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about next best action. Uh, so a lot of us have been talking about omnichannel. So uh, one of the functions of all of this is this concept of, well, when and how should I do those things that I've decided to do with the people that I'm going to work with? So uh, today, we're going to talk about what's needed to build out that engagement plan. Uh, we're going to talk about how to leverage external data for this, uh, how to optimize for, uh, or what to optimize for when you're building all these things out, uh, and some things that we can all do to avoid uh, some, some common pitfalls that we might fall into. So uh, before I talk to this slide, uh, I, I use an idiom in here, uh, silver bullet. Just out of curiosity, is that like a US idiom? Uh, I know there's uh, werewolves in London, according to Warren Zevon, but uh, I don't know if that's like a, a common thing. Basically, uh, what I want to talk about here is there is not one thing that you can do every time, right? There are multiple things that you have to do depending on the people that you're looking to engage, whatever those stakeholders may be, right? Because really, the core of what we're doing here with Next Best Action Planning is the how and when of how I'm going to talk to the people that are most important to me, right? And really, all of us in this room are already doing it, right? Everyone who's ever been in any commercial role, uh, you know uh, it's really important to hit people exactly when uh, it's going to be most impactful for them, uh, because ultimately that's how we get the results that we're looking for as organizations. So, when building these types of programs, there's a couple of things to consider, right? Again, and I'm going to keep coming back to this, it's the when and the how, right? We're trying to figure out those pieces from a lot of different disparate data elements. So uh, common things that people look at, right? They're listed up there. Uh, and uh, uh, the big piece that people need to do, the big action that people need to take before the next best one is getting all of this data in one place, right? Compiling it, pulling it all together, and making sure that everything that you're, you're needing to know about, you have some form of information on, right? Uh, main things, and I think these have been talked about uh, at length during the, uh, the, the presentations of the past couple of days, uh, CRM data, uh, medical claims. Uh, a lot of folks are using this in the US. There's information outside the US that you can leverage for this. Uh, field insights. So we'll talk about some of the uh, actions that we can all take today. Uh, one of them is really about that cross-functional collaboration uh, that's tied into that field insights. Uh, prescription data, clinical data, all of these different aspects that drive all of these pieces for the people that we're looking to engage, those stakeholders. What are those, those elements? So uh, we'll talk a little bit about all of these different aspects, um, but when we're thinking about building this next best action plan, there are a couple of key things to consider, right? First, we have to define what we're trying to accomplish. What questions are we trying to answer? Uh, what actions do we want people to actually take, right? Then it's about knowing your audience. And this is really where it's critical to tie all of that data together. So on that last slide, we were talking about all of these different disparate sources. Everyone in this room knows how challenging it can be to pull all of that information together today, right? Knowing and building that repository is critical, right? It's one of those things that helps to uh, unify all of the efforts that you're going to be able to do and really helps uh, determine what you can actually learn about the people uh, that you're, you're trying to engage. Uh, next is going to be anal uh, analyzing this information uh, and then recording the results. And I think these two elements are really critical, right? This is how you inform the 
future of your interactions as well. It's not just about that first next action, right? It sounds uh, oxymoronic, but it's about the, the next and the next and the next, right? Using all of that information to build a really comprehensive understanding of those individuals that we're trying to engage. So this way we can come back to that analysis step, right? Maybe even redefine those outcomes that we're trying to get to in order to get the outcome that we're really trying to reach. So what are some of the ways that we can do this? Ooh, we've got a little uh, spacing issue, no worries. <laughs> um, identification, first step, right? This is often what we do with our clients. We work with them on the identification element. We talk about uh, KOL identification, uh, center of excellence identification, all of these different elements, right? So who are the right people to engage with, right? That's obviously one of the core pieces. We're not just talking about physicians, we're talking about patient advocacy. We're talking about all of those different players within the space, within that ecosystem of health, uh, healthcare and healthcare providers. We're talking about uh, who is relevant to that end goal that we're trying to achieve, right? That's really what we're trying to come down to, and that's why it's so critical to build out that defined uh, engagement, that defined uh, goal that you're trying to reach to, because ultimately that's going to determine who you need to identify, right? Then you want to start looking at those insights, right? You want to start uh, considering what do these people do, right? What is it about them? Uh, and what have we learned about this person and how they interact? We want to know all of these elements because ultimately this is going to help us land on those pieces that are most relevant and most impactful for that individual. And in order to even get to that how, when, we have to know that what, which, right? We have to know what it is that's going to drive this. And this is really the core of a lot of omni-channel strategy today. That how, when, that next best action piece is really about those engagements, right? This is about how does that person prefer to be engaged, right? We're building out these profiles of people. There are a lot of pieces that you can look at, not just the standard stuff, not just uh, what a person has shared, but you can look at supplemental and secondary data sources to drive a lot of this analysis to give you a clue as to how these people prefer to be engaged, right? Uh, you can also get a sense of when these people would like to be engaged. Obviously, right before ASCO, not a great time to reach out to a physician uh, who's going to be attending, right? We all know uh, there's probably not, uh, not, the, not the best time to engage those folks, right? Uh, and how can we move people more easily from topic to topic, right? When we think about next best action planning, right, we want to make sure that we know where we want someone to get to as well, right? That's one of those core defining pieces when we're talking about how we uh, set up that sort of initial element. Making sure that you know that path that you want someone to follow, that customer engagement path, right? Critical to that how and when for the engagement. And then really at the end, right? And that successful engagement, it's kind of cyclical, not really linear. But being able to iterate on your model, being able to take all of that information, having a really strong data sense, a data background and data fluency, drives all of these pieces in our tracking element. So I want to talk quickly about a case study. Uh, this is a client of ours. Uh, for uh, reasons I'm not going to be able to share the name, but it's a, a top five pharma. But before I talk about that, I want to talk about what H1 does. Uh, I mentioned it slightly, right, working with medical teams, clinical teams, commercial teams. But we do a lot of different things, but really the core of it is aggregating data. And the aggregation is helping us to uh, leverage this more democratized focus of all of the data that H1 is able to collect, all of the data that everyone is generating, right? Uh, this is going to be things from payers and digital health companies, uh, pulling in information on, uh, from PubMed, from different sources, uh, all of those claims elements, pretty much all of those data elements I mentioned. Uh, anything that you can get access to from either a proprietary or a public source, right? This is really where we, we have our core, and it's that com uh, compositional ability of our organization that helps us drive the outcomes uh, for organizations that we work with. So, uh, again, top five pharma global rollout, 90 countries. Uh, the partnership had been going on for about a year, and they came to us asking, how can we know not just who to engage, but the what, when, why, how, 
right? The stuff that we've all been talking about over the past couple of days. And when we told him that it's, it's going to be a journey, right? It's going to be a series of steps. There's not one silver bullet, right? Um, but we start with discovery, right? Knowing who you have, who you're targeting, all of those elements came first, always does. It has to. The core to understanding these people is a centralized profile of information that you can tie everything back to. So you have to do your discovery. Then we moved on to the engagement monitoring piece. Because everything was tied to those core profiles, we're able to take that and turn it into a long-term tracking. We basically took a six-month, a nine-month, and a 12-month benchmark where we looked across all of the CRM records for this organization. We looked across all of the secondary data, so looking at publications they had done, uh, visits, how they correlated with one another, looking at a whole host of other things, right? In this piece, we actually ended up uh, coming back to this measure of impact because the end result that they were looking for was really driven by what was happening within that doctor office. So we bought some of that uh, prescription data, diagnostic data, all of these elements from different parties. Our partner luckily had a lot of this information as well. And we were able to work with them on that analysis to help measure that impact. So we're in our, our second cycle, our second phase of this. And so far, the results have been pretty fantastic. We've seen a, a really strong adoption across that organization, not just within the space of how we measured this impact, but because of the work that we had done here, uh, what we saw was a, a significant increase in the amount of engagement that people were able to do across the entire organization, leveraging all of these tools. Before uh, sort of wrapping up here, uh, I want to just focus on a couple of key takeaways from today. Uh, first, if anyone in this room has not already started this process, you can think of these as sort of the, the keys that I would walk away with. Uh, first is this cross-functional understanding, right? Who in your organization has the data that we all need? We know within all of the organizations that we partner with for these types of things, there are people that own this information, but it's often in silos, right? Not having the ability to access all of these different cross-functional tools and partners really does prevent you from being able to take that first step, right? We need to know as an organization, as partners, as players in this space, all of the relevant data because everything can be mined for those pieces that we look for for engagement planning. Second is strategic deployment. One of the things that I often hear is, oh, uh, well, we, uh, we don't know where to start, right? It's gonna be such a, a big endeavor to go across our entire organization, our commercial team is uh, fragmented, our medical affairs team can't talk to us about these things. Strategic deployment allows you to pick one uh, uh, team, one, uh, I like to think of it like a beachhead, right? You take one organization within the larger structure and say, this is where we're gonna start. And with that, with that strategic deployment, you should think about which teams are best for it, which have the most data already with them, which are the ones that you're going to want to really focus on for your own strategic objectives, right? But ultimately, starting with a, a small piece is, is okay, right? Because you can generate that data and evaluate the results and prove out the ROI for the rest of the organization as a result. Uh, this third one here, I'm not gonna read it off to you, but uh, I like to call it Omer. Um, but basically, it's what we were talking about in uh, sort of that, that longitudinal view. You wanna figure out what it is that you're trying to achieve. How are you going to measure that success? Uh, do the things that you're meaning to do with them and then review the results. And ultimately this is cyclical, right? You're going to come back to the top at the end of it and you should, right? Because ultimately this is a process of iteration and that iteration is how you're going to continue to meet those objectives and all of these different elements. And then the last thing here, and I think this is really important, is uh, developing parallel work streams. There is uh, no reason not to start something like this today, especially if you've got a strategic area that you can launch it into, right? Uh, oftentimes what I hear is, oh, well, we're going to have to spin up this team or that team or these other areas and we're, we're not wanting to, you know, ruffle any feathers over here or over there. Totally fine. There are ways to do parallel work streams, and we've done this with a lot of our clients already, 
where we can start off right with that strategic deployment and start to build out all of those other work streams within this framework uh, right alongside of it. So uh, all that to say, if there's anything else that anyone has any questions on, uh, happy to answer anything. Or if you want to stop off in the other room, we'll be in there for a little bit more. Um, but with that, I'll, I'll kick it back over.